Wait a second. Before you write off Ruby on Rails as some ancient tech that nobody uses anymore, let me show you why that might be one of the biggest mistakes developers are making in 2025. Because here's the crazy part. Rails isn't just alive, it's powering massive platforms, still getting major updates, and quietly helping startups launch MVPs faster than ever. And when I say faster than ever, I mean faster than most modern JavaScript stacks. And I know what you're thinking. Didn't that thing peak like 10 years ago? And you're not wrong to ask that. Everyone's been screaming about React, Next, and whatever's hot this week. But while they're busy arguing about front-end build tools, Rails devs are just out here shipping products and cashing checks. So in this video, we're gonna unpack the truth. Is Ruby on Rails actually still worth learning in 2025? What's the job market like? Who's still using it? And when does it actually make sense to use over something newer? Stick around and you might just rethink everything you knew about Rails. Okay, so before we get into what Ruby on Rails looks like today, let's just rewind a bit to understand how we got here. Rails first dropped back in 2004, created by David Heinheimer Hansen, when he was building Basecamp, a project management tool. And his goal was simple, to stop wasting time on setup and just build. What made Rails different from other frameworks at the time was its philosophy, convention over configuration. In plain English, instead of making you write tons of boilerplate and tell the framework what to do every step of the way, Rails just assumes smart defaults. It knows what you probably want and it gets out of your way. And that mindset changed everything. From 2005 to around 2015, Rails was booming. It was the go-to framework for startups. Think of apps like Twitter, GitHub, Shopify, Airbnb in its early days. All of them either launched on or were heavily influenced by Rails. For developers, Rails was like magic. You could build an entire CRUD app in a day. Devs were talking about how they'd ship features in a weekend that would have taken them a month in Java or PHP. But like all trends in tech, the hype didn't last forever. Around 2015, JavaScript started taking over. Front-end frameworks like React, Angular, and later Vue began dominating conversations, and with Node.js bringing JavaScript to the back end, a lot of newer devs started jumping ship. Rails suddenly felt old or opinionated. But here's the thing, while Rails kind of dipped out of the spotlight, it never really died. It just stopped being the flashy new thing. And a huge number of businesses, startups, and even dev agencies kept quietly using it, well, because it still worked really, really well. So now that we've seen where Rails came from, let's talk about where it actually stands today, right here in 2025. First off, let's get this out of the way. Rails is absolutely still alive, still actively developed, and still widely used in production. The latest version as of this year is Rails 8, and it's not just a maintenance release, it's packed with modern features that prove the framework is evolving with the time. One of the biggest shifts we've seen recently is the way Rails approaches front-end development. The old days of Rails include Rails plus jQuery spaghetti, but now Rails ships with Hotwire Turbo and Stim this which basically allows you to build fast reactive apps without writing a single line of React or Vue. Rails also continues to be backed by a solid, passionate community. Go on GitHub and check the Rails repo, thousands of commits, frequent contributions, and a core team that's actively shaping the future of the frameworks. This is not a zombie project. It's stable, it's modern, and it's still getting better. All right, so Rails is still evolving, still powering major platforms, but what about you? If you're thinking about learning Ruby on Rails in 2025, the obvious question is, will it actually help me get a job or are companies done hiring Rails developers? Let's break that down. Right now, there are thousands of active job listings mentioning Ruby on Rails. Just hop onto sites like LinkedIn, Indeed, or Remote OK and search for Rails developer. You'll see listings from everything from early stage startups to established tech companies, especially in sectors like SaaS, finance, healthcare, and e-commerce. Rails is a especially strong in the startup world. Why? Because when time and money are tight, Rails lets small teams build functional apps fast. Founders love it because it means fewer developers can get more done. But it's not just startups. Big names also still use Rails. Shopify, for example, has one of the largest Ruby on Rails code bases in the world. GitHub too. There are internal tools, admin dashboards, APIs, and legacy systems across a ton of industries still built in Rails, meaning companies need devs to maintain, improve, and scale them. Now let's talk salaries. According to recent 2025 numbers from Stack Overflow and Glassdoor, the average salary for a Rails developer in the US is around 110k to 130k per year. Entry level roles sit closer to 70 to 90, but senior Rails devs can easily hit 150 or more. Not to mention Rails devs are incredibly well positioned for remote work. Rails has always been popular among distributed teams, even before it was cool. Basecamp, the company that created Rails, has been remote first for years. The culture around the framework supports flexibility and async work, which is huge if you're building a freelance career or want to work from anywhere, which is similar to my current position 
question because I'm living in Spain. So is the Rails job market shrinking? No, but it is a bit quieter. You won't see Rails trending on Twitter every day, but when you dig into the actual numbers, and especially when you talk to founders, hiring managers, and product teams, it becomes clear. There's real, stable demand for skilled Rails developers in 2025. So now you're probably wondering, if Rails is still alive and there's still a job market for it, what does it actually do well in 2025? Well, here's the thing. Rails strengths have always been about developer productivity, speed, and simplicity. And in 2025, those strengths are more valuable than ever. First up, speed of development. If you want to go from idea to working prototype in record time, Rails is still one of the best tools for that. This is because of its built-in generators, scaffolding, and opinionated defaults. You can launch a basic code app in a matter of hours. Second, convention over configuration. Rails assumes smart defaults so you can focus on writing actual features instead of wrestling with setup. That saves you a ton of mental energy. Third, everything you need is baked in. With most modern JS stacks, you often end up duct taping together a dozen libraries just to get something running. Rails, you get routing, database access, authentication tools, file uploads, background jobs, and even hotwire for dynamic frontends all right out of the box. And speaking of hotwire, this might be the biggest game changer in recent Rails. With Turbo and Stimulus, Rails gives you modern front-end behavior, like real-time updates, modals, and single-page app experiences, without having to write or manage a complex JS app. You can build snappy interfaces while keeping your app mostly server-rendered. That means fewer moving parts, less debugging, faster load times, and way less context switching. And all of that is a blessing. And finally, let's talk about maintainability. Rails projects tend to age gracefully when built with its convention. Because the structure is predictable, other developers can jump in years later and still know what's going on, and that's a massive win for teams. So yeah, Rails may not be trendy, but it's like the Toyota of web frameworks. Not flashy, but ridiculously reliable, efficient, and built to last. Alright, we've talked about what Rails does really well, but let's be real for a second. No framework is perfect, and Rails definitely has its own set of weaknesses and criticisms in 2025. If you're going to take it seriously, you should know where it falls short too. First up, performance at scale. Rails is fast enough for most apps, but compared to something like a highly optimized node setup, it's not the speed king. If you're building something like a high frequency trading app or a super low latency API, Rails might start to feel sluggish. Then there's the runtime overhead. Ruby is not a compiled language, so it doesn't have the raw execution speed of something like Rust or Elixir. You can scale Rails, but it usually involves throwing more servers at the problem, not squeezing every ounce of performance out of the box. Next, the trendy tech crowd perception. Rails isn't cool right now. If you're the kind of dev who wants to always be working with what's hot on Hacker News or Twitter, Rails might feel a bit quiet. That doesn't mean it's irrelevant, it just means it's not the shiny new toy anymore. Also, if you're working on extremely front-end heavy apps, like those that rely on drag-and-drop builders, complex client-side state, or heavy user interactivity, you might find yourself reaching for React or Vue anyway. Hotwire helps, but it's not a total replacement for full-on SBA frameworks in every case. One more thing. For new developers, the Rails magic can sometimes be a double-edged sword. Because it does so much behind the scenes, it's easy to use Rails without fully understanding what's happening under the hood. That can lead to confusion later on when you're debugging or building more complex features. So yeah, Rails is powerful but it has its blind spots. It's not the best tool for every kind of app and it's not designed to win performance benchmarks, but honestly, most apps don't need that level of performance. What they need is fast development, maintainability, and reliability, and Rails still delivers on that. So now let's ask the big question. How does Ruby on Rails actually stack up against today's modern frameworks and stacks in 2025? Because let's be honest, you've heard about Laravel, Django, Next.js, Node.js, or maybe even newer entrants like Bun or Phoenix. Let's break this down, not with hype, but with real-world comparisons. Rails versus Laravel. Laravel is probably the closest cousin to Rails. It shares a lot of Rails DNA, MVC architecture, built-in tools, a strong community, great for monoliths. And honestly, Laravel has done an incredible job of modernizing PHP development. But here's the difference. Rails is more opinionated, which can actually be a plus if you want structure and fewer decisions to make. Ruby as a language is also cleaner and more expressive than PHP, which makes your code feel more elegant and readable. If you're choosing purely based on dev experience, Rails usually wins. Laravel, on the other hand, might be easier to host and has a huge user base thanks to PHP still being everywhere. So the verdict is that both are great, but Rails gives you more elegance, and Laravel gives you more accessibility. Rails vs Django. Django is the Python equivalent of Rails. It's fast, secure, and also follows the batteries included approach. If you're coming from a data science or machine learning background, Django might feel more natural since you're already in Python land. Rails, however, still has the edge when it comes to developer happiness and tooling. Ruby's syntax is built for expressiveness, and Rails' ecosystem 
ecosystem feels more tightly integrated. Django's admin interface is a killer feature out of the box, especially for internal tools. Rails has alternatives like Active Admin, but it's not quite as plug and play. Pick Django if you're deep in Python. Pick Rails if you want faster dev cycles and a more elegant developer experience. Rails versus Next.js. This is the big one. Most of the modern web today is obsessed with JS. With Next.js, you've got server-side rendering, static site generation, and a whole wave of front-end first development where the UI drives everything. Powerful, don't get me wrong. But the downside, you end up stitching together a bunch of libraries. Express, Prisma, Auth.js, Vercel deployment configs, plus managing front-end state with React or something else. It can get complicated. Rails offers a totally different vibe. A unified, full-stack experience, back-end, front-end, database routing, sessions, all baked in, no duct tape. If you just want to focus on solving product problems instead of wiring tools together, Rails wins on simplicity. So the verdict is that if you want to go all in on JavaScript, go Node and Next. If you want fewer moving parts and faster delivery, Rails still wins. It depends on what you're building and how you like to work. If you're the kind of developer who loves working with the latest front-end tech and piercing together your stack from scratch, cool, go modern. But if you're someone who values focus, simplicity, and getting real things built fast, Rails still has a very real edge, even in 2025. So, after everything we've covered, the history, the current state, job prospects, strengths, weaknesses, and how Rails stacks up against modern alternatives, is Ruby on Rails actually worth learning in 2025? The simple answer is yes, absolutely. Rails remains a powerful, mature framework that can help you build full featured web applications quickly and maintain them easily. It's got a vibrant community, modern features like hotware and plenty of real world demand, especially if you want to work at startups, SaaS companies or on remote teams. It's not for everyone. If you're aiming for ultra high performance or you want to dive deep into cutting edge front end frameworks or simply want to be on the absolute bleeding edge of tech trends, look elsewhere. But if you want a reliable, elegant and practical tool that helps you ship apps fast, learn solid software design principles and open doors to solid career opportunities, Rails is still a great choice in 2025. In the end, it's about what fits your goals and style. And Rails, it's ready to help you build something real right now. If you're ready to dive into Ruby on Rails and want to learn from someone who's been there, built that and can guide you step by step, I've got something just for you, my Ruby on Rails mentorship program. Whether you're starting fresh or want to level up your skills, this program cuts through the noise and focuses on what really matters. Building real projects, mastering best practices, and getting you career ready. So if Rails feels like the right path for you, don't just watch, take action. Click the link in the description to take a look at my Ruby on Rails mentorship program. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.